that I was a bit selfish. And when I say that, I mean, me, 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 it's all about me, it's about my needs, what about me? Um, any conversation that my ex-husband would wanna talk about, I would try to be like, well, what about me? And how do I feel? And it's not about you at that moment. into this because we're going to talk about giving uh, people inspiration who might have gone through a separation or divorce. You know, we're all about building people up here. So this is going to be a powerful episode. Today's guest is a single mom uh, with a full uh, academic scholarship. Her son is currently beginning his second year of college. Congratulations to that young man. <laughs> she holds a doctorate from Lynn University works as a college professor in the Houston area. Shout out to Houston. I'm in Austin. <laughs> Over the last 20 years in the uh, HR industry, she loves traveling, reading, and investing, and listening to live music and bands, and also working out is some of her interests. And also, she was married for 10 years and went through a divorce in 2009, and now she has uh, her and her ex-husband get along great as co-parents. Bravehearts community, let's show some love to Dr. Tia McCall. How are you doing this beautiful afternoon? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yes, not a problem. We follow each other on Facebook, and I'm thinking, who else is the perfect person to get in touch with uh, to give some inspiration to people who might be going through a divorce or some separation? So I want to talk to you about that process with your divorce, what did you learn from it and how did you overcome it? Um, You know, divorce is like a death. I'm pretty sure you heard that. Um, My ex-husband and I, we were pretty successful as well. So I know when you're divorcing, you see how you think about everything aspect, like, is this the right thing to do? Oh, I have to start over. But guess what? If it's not working, it's not working. And just because it doesn't work as husband and wife doesn't mean you can't overcome and become friends. That's if you have children, because I don't believe in being friends with your exes. And I, I don't believe in that. To me, that's toxic. Um, but however, if you have kids together, it's very important to overcome that aspect of hating each other and animosity, get past the other bridge of it. And become mature adults and raise a great kid or kids. And, you know, that was our goal. Um, it took us a while to get there. But we, I'm telling you, we are there. We're great. My son is thriving as a human, human being. And that's what's most important to me. And I'm pretty sure to my ex-husband as well. So, but divorce is like a death. It really is. Mm -hmm. and... I, I wish it on my worst enemy. <laughs> Yes, it is like a death, right? I Because I was, you know, of course, divorced myself. And I remember just being in the shower one day after our separation. And I'm like, this is my new life now. Like, here I am about to finalize this divorce. And I'm in the shower just crying up a storm because, like you said, it was like a death. And I had to make that transition. And it was tough um, because I know a lot of guys don't like to talk about their feelings. But, yeah, I, I was going through it. So. No, Sean, we welcome it, seriously. And that's been the process of the dating. Um, our men, they don't feel comfortable just being their authentic self if they want to cry. or I mean, I think it's so healthy to allow that space for your mate, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your spouse to be in. And it's okay to cry because that's very difficult. You shared your life with someone you never thought that you will be ending that process as husband and wife. It's very, very painful. It took me a very long time to get through it. Um, I know you watch my social media page as well. So you will see, I, I was thinking a lot about therapy and I'm telling you therapy does wonders. And that's how I was able to get to the other side and become a mature adult in the aspect of overcoming divorce. It was very, I would say one of the most difficult decisions I've ever had to make in my life. Would you, are, are you open to, to remarriage or you're, you're done with the whole married life? You know what? Let me tell you the problem. I think it was Cat Williams who said that. Quote me if I'm incorrect. He said something like, I'm paraphrasing it. Mm -hmm. He said something like, sometimes you can be single too long. <laughs> <laughs> 
And let me tell you, I, I love my life. I travel a lot. Um, I'm coming and going as I please. I'm dating here and there. I've had some, um, I had a couple of long-term relationships, you know, from 2009 to now. And I, I love my life. So if a person is going to come into my space, they have to enrich my life because I have a great life <laughs> right now. I really do. <laughs> so <laughs> I kind of feel like a dude, like, uh. <laughs> I don't know, but marriage is a beautiful thing. I will always promote marriage. Um, to me, it's a wonderful thing. I, I consider marriage as the pinnacle. Like it's the ultimate pinnacle. It's very different from boyfriend, girlfriend, baby daddy stuff. And people don't understand that. They try to compare a baby daddy with a husband or wife. And it's not the same thing. That's a totally different level. Ma marriage is the pinnacle. <laughs> it really is. Um, so... Yeah, the person has to enrich my life. I have to see a reason to do to give up my freedom and my singleness. <laughs> yeah, because you know, remarriage, remarriage isn't for everybody, right? I mean, because if you've been through it and you know, but the funny thing about marriage is or remarriage is the divorce rates are higher the second time around. Really? Uh, yes, I believe statistically it's around 67% divorce rate second time around i didn't know that yes so the reason for that is i was i was doing some research i think it was on psychology today the number one reason why the divorce rate is higher because they didn't learn from the first marriage here we go what did i mention you and that's another thing too um with the whole therapy thing and being heal healing because i'm always healing i'm always looking for hey how can i make a better tia um so when you're in that space, because I feel like I'm in a different space because I'm always talking about therapy and there's nothing wrong with getting on the couch. I mean, you can be your authentic self there. Mm -hmm. And when you're at that stage in your life and then you get a broken person, you're like, oh, and I'm going to give you an example. Like when I'm with a guy and he's behaving a certain way, I can tell his childhood issues. Mm. Let's talk <laughs> about that. Let's let's talk about that. Go a little bit in depth. How is that? Is that your discernment? Like, let's talk about that. It is because I've been um, to therapy, a, you know, a couple of times in my lifetime, um, you know, uh, childhood, childhood. Mm -hmm. issues, And then when, of course, when my divorce ended, um, then I had another uh, relationship that was very, very hard for me. I want to say back in 20. When did that relationship end? I want to say 2017. It ended, so it, I had to land back in therapy about that. Um, you know, that's a relationship I thought, actually I thought I was going to the altar with that one. So it's a it's a discernment. Um, it's the way they behave, whether it's mommy issues or daddy issues or trust issues. It, I mean, I, I, it, I just recognize it immediately. And, you know, I say, I say it with love. I was like, you know, this is not working and maybe you should see a therapist. And it's, it's all about the delivery with yes. people. It, it really is. And um, for the most part, it's been very receptive from guys, you know, because I have that loving touch and, you know, I'll go into details. Hey, you know, you know, when this happened or when this happened, you have to give people examples. I give them examples and I say, you know, I think you're a great guy. And just because a guy is great doesn't mean he's for you. You're a great guy. Um, things just not working out right now. And, you know, the great thing about when you leave something like that, mm. maybe it's OK to spin the block. I like that. Because they just didn't heal. They just didn't heal at that time. And I'm at a different place in my life. So may I said maybe I'm not really into second chances, whether mm. that's friendships, relationships. I'm not really into that. Mm. However, I'm not going to be closed minded because if this person did the work. Hey. Maybe, but yeah, you just give a person examples. And um, I've had a couple of guys come back and I'm saying to this day, matter of fact, a couple of guys this year, they say, you know what? I really want to thank you about your suggestion mm. about going to therapy. I did it. It was childhood issues. I had unresolved issues. Do you think we can work it out again? Let's try again. Mm. So I mean, it's all about the, the, the delivery when you give constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Folks, it really is. Mm -hmm. I love that because 
a lot of times I think when people are dating, from what I've seen from experiences, is people try to hold on to people that they know aren't the person for them. At that moment. At that moment, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I've I've met, you know, and I, I can honestly say that maybe it's because of my total package. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I've been meeting great guys. I have. We're talking about great guys, great fathers. You know, you know how women say we want the provider. We want to mm -hmm. protect great guys. Um, I noticed the timing has been off. It's been the timing. That's what I've noticed, you know, through this entire dating process after my divorce. But for the most part, I must say I have met great guys. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So and, and from what I'm hearing from you is like there's really no rush because you're enjoying your life. Yes, it's it's no rush. Um, uh, I I am open to it, but I'm hoping I hurry up and get there quick because the longer I'm staying single, the more I'm liking it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, think think about it. You you remarried again, so you get what I'm saying because you were single at a time from your first marriage to you know now your second marriage. You could come and go as you please. You could wake up. You don't have to cook. You don't have to do other wife or husband duties. If you know what I mean, it, I'm like, ooh, I'm liking this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I really and, know, but I'm, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm really hoping God will place that person in my life pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a blessing because I think what happened with a lot of, with a lot of singles is people, uh, they're rushing, you know, opposed to just enjoying their singleness. Like, there's nothing wrong with being single. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. Um, do you follow Devon Franklin? Yes. Mm -hmm. He actually posts something about women being single and in society it's look upon like, oh my God, she's single. <laughs> and he's like, it's nothing wrong with that just because you're not t attached to someone else. Um, in my case, I was married before. I've had a kid. I've had the white picket fence. So it's really now it's no rush. It's about the next time staying married. And that's what I want. I really want the entire shebang. We're talking about 70, 80 years old in my front porch with my homemade lemonade with me and my man in our rocking chair. I mean, that's what I really want. So I'm going to take my time. And this time I'm going to allow God to make the decision for me. He's, he literally has to land in right here, plain in sight. I have to hear a voice. This is your husband. <laughs> Because I am not making any more decisions on my own. I'm just not doing it. It's not worth it. Obviously, it's not working. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wisdom. Because we got to be willing to hear the voice mm -hmm. of God. Because anything that we do is just not going to work on our own strength, right? We it, might think it so. But... Work, it doesn't work on your own will. And you mentioned you mentioned that earlier that divorce rates higher because people didn't learn their second time. And, you know, I've always been the type of person I learned the first time. I've never been hard headed. <laughs> We're talking about as an adult. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. I was like, uh, I don't like that feeling the first time around. I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I'm not. And it's, it's very important to learn from your mistakes with anything. It's just not a relationship. It's with anything. It can be with a job. It can be what a friendship. You have to learn. Mm -hmm. You do. You you really do. Yeah, it remain. Yeah, remain teachable. Because I was talking to my wife about that the other day. Like, there's a lot of things I had to unlearn going into a second marriage. Old mindsets. You mm -hmm. know, things that didn't work in my first marriage. So, um, I, I, I at 46 years old, I tell people, I am a lifelong learner. I'm a student. Me too. I I mean, me too. I I love to learn. Mm -hmm. I, I do. I love school. I, I love to learn. Um, I, I feel like I'm always evolving for the better because I have learned from my mistakes. So I'm always trying to go to the next level. I'm always looking for the next level. But it's, it's, it is it's very important to learn from your past mistakes. Like, why would you want to get divorced again? Not not mention it's very costly. It costs so much money to get a freaking divorce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Easy to get in, hard to get out of. <laughs> oh, what we're talking about learning and and you know mistakes. What do you feel was your biggest takeaway from your divorce? What did you learn in that process of divorce? 
Um, I feel now that I'm older and looking back at it, that's interesting you said that. I feel that I was a bit selfish. And when I say that, I mean, me, 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 it's all about me, it's about my needs, what about me? Um, any conversation that my ex-husband would want to talk about, I would try to be like, well, what about me? And how do I feel? And it's not about you at that moment, okay? If you had a problem with your, your partner, you should bring that problem to your partner. When your partner brings something to your attention, that is not the right time for you to flip the script and deflect and re use reverse psychology and say, hey, what about when you did this? That Come on, that's not effective communication. It, it, it really, it, and it's not fair. So that's what I've learned. Um, I'm so used to getting my way when I want it, how I want it. I mean, just in general, I'm so used yeah. to it. Um, so I, I think the entire brattiness, because I was a brat, bring into, you know, hey, it's all about me. Do, you know, do this for me, do this for me. And I take away from that, if anything, and I will definitely be more giving of myself next time around, because I know I have to own that. And I had to work on that of not being a brat <laughs> because I'm so used to being spoiled. Speaking of spoiled, these guys, these days, they don't know how to spoil a woman. Talk about it. So I'm like, <laughs> no, the reason why I just rather stay single. I'm like, I just don't see the reason of attaching to myself. If I'm not going to get queen treatment or princess treatment, I, I just don't see the reason of that, you know, within reason. <laughs> yes. Yeah. With for sure. Reason. Um, but that's what I've learned <laughs> from my divorce. So I, I'm telling you now, now I know how to do it at a better pace. Can I say that? Yes. I'm not so much of a brat. <laughs> <laughs> and me, me, because it's it's not all about me. It, it is, you know, collectively, it's a team effort. Yes. I, I love that you said that because I had, that was something I had to learn myself too. Everything was, and I wasn't spoiled. It was, it was my childhood trauma of feeling like I never was heard. Ooh, see, I, I'm, I'm the older, I'm the oldest. So I've always was heard. <laughs> um, always, you know, was heard of, or being a leader, but no. So what about that? You just like not being heard Were you the, were you the youngest? I'm the middle child. Oh, okay. It explains yeah. Yeah, because there uh, there's a book, I think, by Dr. Kevin Lehman called The Birthing Order. Mm. And he breaks down from like presidents to athletes to like the roles that people play when you're the oldest. When you're the oldest person, they have these traits or tendencies. That is true. Yeah. So even going into marriage, that even plays a factor. Are you the middle child? Are you the oldest? If you're the oldest, then, you know, you might have more. Uh, 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 leadership qualities. That is correct. That's true. That's true. My ex-husband, he, um, it was six of them and he was number five. So it, it explains it. And he, he was a bit spoiled too. <laughs> so can you imagine two spoiled people used to getting their way when they just need to cut out the foolishness and come together? And here, thank you too, Sean. Um, I don't know if you will agree with that. Marriage is not hard. It's a lovely thing. Go ahead. Talk about that because I love that you said that. Yeah, go it's, ahead. Again, remember where I'm learning from my mistakes and I'm looking back and I'm, you know, I'm thinking about everything. And I, I was like, you know, you know what? It wasn't that hard, Tia. <laughs> mm. Really reflecting on the past. Well, what could I have done differently? I could have done th this. I think it, what he and I was definitely timing um, because overall, it wasn't a bad marriage overall of the 10 year span. Um, <laughs> I, I I think, yeah, he was full and I was full and we just wasn't going to give in. And, you know, it's my way or the highway. And that's not going to work. It's it's not. It, it's really not. And like you mentioned, when you are, you're used to being a leader, I'm a leader. Um, when we're talking about I'm a leader at home. I'm a leader at work. I've always been a leader at work. Always. I've always did. I've always done great in school. So I've always been a leader. I've always been like the head of the class. 
Um, I've always, you know, make a graze. I've just always done this. And then I'm getting with someone who's used to being babied and spoiled and, you know, it was what they say, crash and burn, crash and burn. Crash and burn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I get it because it can be difficult. Cause like I was saying, I know for me, that was my struggle. I felt like I didn't, I felt like I wasn't being heard when, at when, whenever my ex-wife was talking, I should have let her say what she needed to say. And uh, I call it the struggle Olympics. I'm like, look, we don't both have to fight over this one thing. It's your turn. Now your feelings are valid. It's about you. How can I help you opposed to, well, I do this, so we're comparing. It's, it's what I mentioned earlier. It's the comparing. It's the, you know, me, 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 me first. No, 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 no. It, come on, it's not hard. That's what I mean. If you learn these simple techniques that happen um, that actually didn't work, obviously it didn't work. It landed you in divorce court. If you learn that, then your second marriage can be successful, especially if that person's been married before. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To me, I think that's a slam dunk. I, actually, that's one of my preferences. I prefer for a guy to be married before. I, I mean, when I get that, when I get that type of situation, meaning when I end up dating that type of guy, I'm really like, I'm really trying to make that relationship work. Okay. Like, okay. He's been married like me before, especially a long time. I mean, off, off, yeah, great similarities. And I noticed with those type of relationships, it has actually worked best for me because they understand the value of having a great co-parenting relationship with my ex-husband. Not so, not so much now, you know, my son is off to college, but we're talking about um, in his later teen years, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old, those, that, you know, that was very important that I got along with my ex-husband. And only a guy who's been married before understood that. That's what I noticed. Mm -hmm. A guy who's never been married before or who's who has never had a long term relationship. They they don't understand it. So that's actually one of my pre preferences. I, I get all butterflies inside. When I, oh, you've been married before for how long? Tell me more. <laughs> I, I, I absolutely love it. I, I noticed those have been my, my more successful relationships as far as accountability being you know compatible <laughs> i i love that because a lot of times people that when they marry they want to marry somebody who possibly haven't been married but i do believe that there is a, a, a slight advantage to those who've been married it is you, it you is. did it before you know you um, do you did it before you understand it um it it, it is. I, again, I have to speak for me. That's that's what's been working for me as far as being um, when I notice it, looking at the, compali the compatibility mm -hmm. of someone, I'm like, OK, I noticed this is good for me being with someone. Um, another thing, you know, for instance, if a guy has a kid 18 or older, again, we're talking about similarities. OK, my kid is, um, you know, he's going to his second year of college. I've been uh, divorced. So we we do we have a lot of advantages as far as being a compatible couple, and that's what I've noticed. Um, you know, some other things I've noticed about myself as well because you may not know what you want, but you know what you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. No, that's right. It is true, but yeah, uh, you know, that's the entire dating process. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it do might you be being married? <laughs> So do you find dating easier or harder compared to, say, when you first went through your divorce to today? I, I, I think it's easier because I don't waste so much time with an individual, meaning mm -hmm. I know from the beginning, maybe maybe one or two conversations, this is not going to work. Mm -hmm. And if it, you know, if it does work, meaning if I allow the relationship to go past one or two conversations, one or two, three months, you you are you automatically know it's not working. So I do suggest that women get out earlier. I mean, why are you sticking around for so long? You know, this is not working. Vice versa with the guy as well. You know, this is not working. You're not compatible. Um, it's, it's no spinning the block. This person, not only they need to be healed, they probably 
need to go do some other things as well, do more work on themselves. It's just not going to work. Um, so yeah, it's for me, it's very easy because I'm able to weed out individuals immediately. Mm -hmm. I love that. Maybe you should do like a course or something. Maybe you should do something to help people out, you know, singles. This is <laughs> this is how you can, you know, cut ties and keep it moving because because I interviewed a lady not probably about three months ago, and she said she knew she married the wrong guy, but she still went through with it because of like she just felt like she knew. Like, well, I'm gonna make it work because this is me. Like, I can make it work. But she knew she was marrying the wrong person. Right. That I mean, I didn't know uh, because I was only 21 when I got married. Mm. I got married at 21, divorced at 31. So I mean, I you know, come on, at 21, I didn't know. Yeah. I maybe thought of because I, I have been living on my own since I was 19 years old. I've had my own place since I was 19 years old. I was a homeowner uh, before I met my husband, 21. So mm -hmm. I thought I was grown, but I still had some living to do. Um, so no, I, I didn't know. I really thought he was the one. So I, I can't say that for that aspect, but I, I could say very, very early on into the marriage, I was like, okay, he's not the one. <laughs> mm. And, and and I want to ask you about the um the the parenting. I want to just talk about that real quick. Okay. How does how does that work? Like where do you get to a place where y'all both can effectively co-parent? Because a lot of times when you're going through the divorces, if it isn't amicable, somebody's probably upset at the other person. Absolutely. Um I will speak briefly on my situation. How did we eventually get there? Because I'm I'm asked this question a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, he and I, we actually talked about writing a book. So we, I mean, you know, I have so much on my plate right now, but I think that's very important. Um, I'm very innovative with that as far as what can I do differently? So I think writing a co-parenting book is definitely um, something that he and I have spoken about. But I would say right after the separation and divorce, he basically didn't come around for like a year, year and a half because it was too painful. Um, so I, I think I got to a place like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to be nice to him. I'm going to be the mature one. When he pisses me off, I'm going to keep my mouth closed. Um, if he says anything out of order in front of our kid, my mouth closed. I just decided that, you know, what can I do to make the situation better? De-escalate the situation. Because I mentioned before, it's not about me. It's about my kid. So that, I believe, that's how we got to that place. I was already in therapy. Mm -hmm. I already had the tools and techniques. I just need to bring him to the other side. So mm -hmm. all I did was give him a little, little honey. That's what I did. I was very sweet with him. Didn't have much to say. And if you're not arguing with that person, who are they arguing with? It takes two to argue. I love that. So that, then, he came, he was wow, okay, she, I'm arguing about myself, I'm bickering about myself, I'm being petty, I'm being bitter. Um, basically, he's being the woman right now in the, in the situation. <laughs> so that's if, that's eventually how I was able to get him over there onto the other side. I can only control me. I had to do things differently. What I was doing before wasn't working. I'm not an argumentative person anyway. That's just not who I am. But what can I do? And that's what I did. And let me tell you, our relationship, our co-parenting relationship became a 360. Mm -hmm. We were able to start sitting down, having conversations. Again, I was bringing all these techniques that I received in therapy. We were able to sit down and talk about how we want to raise our kid. Because at this time, my kids probably like, because we divorced when he was five. I think it was five, right? Whatever, 2003 to 2009. I don't know. <laughs> right now, I'm, like, I'm not calculating right now. It's Saturday. Um, so I think my son was like five or six. So at this time, he's probably like seven, seven and a half. Okay, this is a great time. He's not going to remember that mommy and daddy was bickering. You know, you don't remember too much five, six, seven years old. And yeah, we, and I told him, I said, hey, you could come by anytime you want, as long as I'm home. So, you know, we didn't follow the, our divorce um, 
what do you call that when you get a divorce or stipulation? We didn't, we didn't, the, we didn't follow that anymore. Like he was supposed to get our kid every other weekend. He would get our kid every weekend. Mm -hmm. And during the week he would come take him to school or drop by. And he, yeah, I told him I, I had an open door policy. So that is how I was able to switch it around. I was being nice to him when he wants to argue. I didn't argue back. And I just created an open door policy. I, I created a safe place for him. So it's very different, I know, because we're used to bickering and going back and forth and being in toxic situations as far as a co-parenting situation. But I decided I didn't want that for my kid. You know, I have a sweet son. He's a good kid. And I wanted to maintain that innocence with him. To this day, he still has a sweet spirit about him. And I know that stems from mommy and daddy getting alone and creating a safe haven for him. I know it is. So that is what I did. It worked. I love that. I, I love that because I hear you saying that you took the initiative opposed I did, to. I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. You're talking about being a bigger person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, because I know the old schoolers, they would always say, you know, you get more bees with honey. You it's know? true. It's true. It, it really is true. And that's what I did. I mean, if I'm not arguing with you again, I mentioned before, I'm not even an argumental person. So I'm arguing with you for what? We're over. <laughs> yeah, it's over. This is not about me. <laughs> Why are you arguing with someone when it's over? Mm. Why are you going back and forth? It's wasted. It's wasted energy. It's unhealthy. And it's not resolving anything. I'm about resolving issues. Anyone know, knows that about me? I want to resolve issues. I, I'm not talking about this and talking about that. What is the solution? Mm -hmm. The solution is I can only control Tia. And that's what I did. I took control of myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I love it. Go and take the time, do the work on yourself. I really wish they would. The world would be a better place. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I went through therapy myself. And I, I was. My first therapist was phenomenal. Like I got my therapist maybe go, like into the first year of my second marriage. Okay. So I was with her for like two and a half years. Then COVID happened. But she was, I learned so much. I learned about you know, my childhood traumas and, and my insecurities and, and my failures. And even just the way I think about myself, like there was a lot of unlearning I had to do in order to be more productive this time around going into my second marriage. Yes. And you know what? I must say, you seem so happy. And I'm, I'm saying, physically, I can see the love. I can see the happiness, I see the bright smile, I can see the spirit. You you do seem like hey, yeah. You guys look great together, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. That's that's my friend. I, you know, we got a twelve year age gap between us. I'm twelve years really? older than her. Yeah, I wouldn't guess. I wouldn't guess. My ex husband eleven years older than I am. He's mm. eleven. So I was twenty one. He was thirty two when we got married. Mm. So let me ask you this real quick, since we're talking about it. How do you feel about the, the age dynamic? Did that play any part into your marriage or or no? I I don't think so. And I I don't think so. And I only because I wasn't as experienced and culturally um exposed as he was. But guess what? He traveled a lot as well. He traveled a lot for work. And we're talking about international traveling too. So I think international traveling is, is a whole nother level. <laughs> it's another level. So he was able to brighten my horizons with international traveling as far as culturally wise. So I was able to get that very quickly. But um, I, I don't think the age gap, no, because I've always dated older men, always. So no, not, not at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. You know, if I was being immature or something, he will call me out on it. I didn't like it. Yeah. But believe it or not, I will listen. Like, okay, because I, I mentioned before, I've always been... Um, that type of person who wants to improve herself. Like, okay, I'm not going to fight against this. He's older than I am. He's more exposed. 
maybe he has a point. Maybe I should look into that. So it's mm -hmm. always was the betterment of me. And thank God I, I will listen to him. Mm -hmm. and where did you where did you get that trait from? Because it seemed like you like being solution oriented. Is that something that you just learned over time through wisdom or was that taught in your household? Because I think that that's was, a trait most people miss. That what in our household? Um, accountability. It was. It, it was taught in the household. Um, I'm glad I learned that very early on. Um, constructive criticism early on. Able to take the feedback. Um, able to recognize, is this the correct feedback that I should improve upon myself? Okay. I'm going to give you an example to clean your room. Clean your room. It's a little junky. It's a little, you know, junky back in the day. Well, you know, the word to use, but it's disorganized. <laughs> yeah, and right. You know what? I want to be an organized person. Take that feedback and turn it into a positive. So now, guess what? I have OCD. I like everything in order. <laughs> and again, that's from childhood. But yeah, I, I think it was taught very early on. Mm -hmm. And so I now it's like to the magnitude, I'm about accountability. And if a person is not being accountable, Ooh, that's my pet peeve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. mine's too. I, I hear you because by today's standards, accountability is almost a curse word to a lot of people. It's like. Yeah. And then when you bring up, when you bring up hey, I don't like this. They want to flip it around, say, well, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because remember, I learned this in my marriage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not talking about me right now. We're talking about you. I don't like this. You need to correct this or we're going to have problems. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yep. You're right about that. I, I love it. I want to switch gears real quick because I want to respect your time. Oh, what is I'm, the... it's... <laughs> okay. I had a I had a guest on my show one time. It was supposed to be a 30 minute show. It turned into two and a half hours. It was crazy. Like I lost like we just lost track of time. And I was like, well, we're just going to keep running because. You know, I don't want to miss any any great content. And I had to no. break it up into two shows because that's just how long it was. But no, no, we're fine. I you and I spoke early in the week and I blocked off today for you. We're fine. <laughs> well, I feel honored. Thank you. <laughs> what is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? Ooh, I would say sleeping with a guy. Let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah I, I would say that and um i i'm a strong believer in soul ties i am a strong believer in that and when you sleep with someone you didn't go, get to know that person you don't like that person you just like the way they make you feel in the bedroom you don't even like that person you guys are not even compatible or you're lonely and you're bored no, I, I say sleeping with someone. Um, I have definitely, in my journey of being single, have been able to control that physical part of myself. So I think, to me, I'm able to think clearer. You're going solely on substance when you don't sleep with someone. It's not physical. And this has nothing to do with, you know, because I would meet guys and say, hey, you know, you're too Christian or you're too churchy or I'm like me because <laughs> of, you know, I basically I let them know, hey, I don't sleep around and I'm probably not going to sleep with you. <laughs> I tell them straight up. I said, probably, you know, I am human, but <laughs> I have to get to know you. Um, Is this long term? Are we going to the altar? What's the point of a body count? So I would say the biggest mistake with women is uh, sleeping with a guy, especially sleeping with him too early. I, I Yeah, I love that because we live in a culture today where, you know, everybody's more sexually liberated and this is my body and I can do what I want to do with it. But very few people take the time to think, what am I doing wrong to make me keep repeating getting with the same person, just different faces. That's exactly what it is. And, it, you know, it can go for men too. Of and, course. I, and I recognize, again, um, I have a lot of guy friends. 
So I know that women are constantly throwing themselves at you guys. I know that. I know it's very hard to do. But for you guys, think about it, especially if he's a great guy. Now you end up, you know, with just anyone. And now you can't get rid of the person. That's a whole nother <laughs> topic. But yeah, I, I, I'm telling you, when you're sleeping with people, you can't think clearer. I, I think that's why I'm, I'm just so cut and dry and I'm able to cut it off quickly because, hey, this is not working and I'm going to move on. Yeah. But that's the big mistake with women. Yeah. Keep your legs close. Period. I love it. Mm -hmm. Wisdom, wisdom for days. We need to bring back some of those good values like that. You know, I post that. On my remember I said, uh, I said pretty soon the woman with the lovely face. <laughs> okay. So pretty soon those type of values are going to return. You know, mm. the women, and, you know, it's okay to cover yourself up and keep your clothes on. You don't need to show your stomach. You don't need to be in a bikini. You don't need to do all that. Like, seriously. I mean, if you're an IG model or something like that, like that's your trade, or if you're a personal trainer, I get all that. I, I do. I do. But we're talking about just bikini pictures for days and showing off. Like, you don't need to do all that. That's not your profession. That's not how you make money. You don't need to do that. Especially someone like me with my background, I, I mean, you would never catch that on my page. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, and, and and I think uh, when I was talking, because uh, I met my wife on Instagram. Okay. Right? Okay. And I remember going through her pictures, you know, as I'm looking, I'm scrolling, I'm like, okay, not being judgmental, but I was kind of looking for the 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 ratchet turn up pictures, you know. No judgment, but I'm just like, Let right, me see. Right. I was kept scrolling. I didn't find any of them, and she was fully clothed in all her pictures. Um, and to me, I'm just kind of maybe maybe I'm just kind of a different type. I like I like classy women. I like women that's you know because if you find you just find period. So I was always a fan of being fully clothed and stuff like that, and being classy and you know stuff like that. So I was like. I really like her because she, the way she carried herself, it wasn't like, you know, just kind of like out here. So. It does. Be. And mm -hmm. she is. <laughs> yeah, that's my girl. Love her. Um, from seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Um, It taught me. Well, remember, my parents are divorced. Um, so it's not something that I wanted for myself, although my parents, they were together, you know, childhood sweethearts and together. But what it what it did teach me is um, love. Mm -hmm. It did teach me love. They, they did marry each other. Uh, again, timing. I think it was the wrong timing for them. Uh, but that's what that's what it taught. I mean, I grew up very in a very loving household, regardless if they were divorced. I got love from my dad's side and I got love from my mom's side, but we're talking about as a unit, you know, a very loving unit. So um, that's very important to me to make sure that I have love in my marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all about leaving the, the legacy of love when we think about what we pass on to our kids. It is. It really is. So, I mean, I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, you can have it all. So having love is very important. I know that nowadays people are getting married for the wrong reasons. And, you know, hey, that's them. But I know for, for my marriage, I do want love. I'm not saying going into my next marriage, because remember now I'm going, we're going to the second marriage. I'm not saying that needs to be a top priority on my next marriage. Mm -hmm. Top priority in my last marriage. But my next marriage, yes, I do have to have love included because love is the glue. Mm -hmm. You're right about that. I agree because I I just believe that marriage is the the background. It's the it's the it's what holds society together. I believe it really is. Remember, I mentioned it's the pinnacle. It really is. Yeah. And this this question is right. There's no right or wrong answer. Is That's it easy? Easy. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? It's easier to love yourself, and if you don't love yourself, how can you love someone else? 
So it's okay to be selfish and put yourself first. Because if I'm not the best version of myself, how can I be a role model and a mother to my son? So it's easier for me to love myself. And I know society makes us feel like that's a bit self-centered or selfish, but if you're no good to yourself, how can you be good to your family? You have to love yourself first. So it's easier to love yourself. It is. Totally agree. Yes, I love it. This has been a phenomenal episode, Dr. Tia. I appreciate your time. Do you have any parting wisdom for the listeners or the viewers out there? I do have some wisdom. Um, I would say if you're looking to marry again, look, make sure that you are healed from your childhood trauma or your past relationships or your first marriage. Make sure you know what you need to do so you can be a better you and be a whole person. Okay. So you need to pray, go to therapy and heal. That is my wisdom. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, Dr. Tia, I want to acknowledge you for being a guest and being so transparent about you know your personal life and things that went on there, because I believe it's through our transparency that we can help other people. Um, yeah. So I, I want to acknowledge you for that and also acknowledge you for just being so smart. I, I seen your bio and your resume and I'm just like, what is it that she doesn't do? <laughs> so I, I'm a but learning, I, I like to learn. I really do. Um, I've always, I mentioned before, I've always done great in school. I, I just like to learn. I, I really, and I've always, I get bored easily. So I'm always having a lot of things going on. Um, I'm right now I'm in Florida because um, a situation, my dad, he's sick. So I have to put that on top of my plate, but I'm always having other things going on. And we're not saying that the other things that are going on, they're not important because they are. It's just, I get bored easily. So I have to have multiple projects going on. I, I do. I can't be what they say, an idle mind. It's not yeah. good. <laughs> I just can't sit there. I, I do. I have a lot of things going on. But as far as school, I'm done with school. <laughs> as far as I would take any type of professional courses or certifications, that's fine. But as far as school, I'm done. <laughs> I know that's right. No, I just wanted to acknowledge you for those things. So um, continue to do what you're doing and continue to give wisdom because our society, we need it. Uh, we need voices like yours to help the younger generation. And I know you have a son as well. So I know you've been investing in him as well. But to even those who might be watching or listening to this. So I appreciate you um, taking the time to share that wisdom. Brave Hearts community, you heard it here first. Make sure that you connect with uh, Dr. Tia on her Facebook page. I know there's a lot. I see a lot of your posts and I'm just like, she preaching. That probably just need to be a whole podcast episode in itself, but I know you're a busy woman. So I'm not going to say you need to podcast, but you know, <laughs> so. Might be in the work. There we go. I will subscribe. If you bring out your podcast, I will subscribe for sure. So Thank you. <laughs> you already got somebody that's going to subscribe. So I'm your first subscriber. <laughs> Make sure, Brave Arts community, you hit the subscribe button. Share this video with someone because you never know who might be going through something. I know with social media, everyone is flawless, but we all deal with something uh, once we put the phone down. So this episode could possibly help you leave a rating and review. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, would love to hear from you by doing so. It puts you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? This is Sean Heinemann with special guest. Dr. T. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, for thanks that. again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here, but anyway, go watch another video.